it's absolutely amazing. I'm just tongue tied, just talking about it, making the yes. best. Yes, I'm a favorite now. Welcome to the Extraordinary Being Movement, where we inspire you to take action, influence you for change, and motivate you for success. This is your host and coach, Len Carmine here, and we have an exciting show for you today. We're going to be talking about public relations, the most effective strategy to become visible in your industry as a thought leader to build trust and credibility. So this is a show you do not want to miss. But before we do that, let me introduce my two favorite co-hosts, the one and only Fred Martinez. Fred, welcome to the show. How are you today? Good. <laughs> Look at this guy has energy. I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Christopher Shiver, how's things going? That makes that bad today because I, I used to work in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Seychelles. And so PR is like a big deal. We're going to learn a lot today because I think this is something a lot of people in business really need to understand of really how to get publicity, how to promote themselves, how to get them the attention that they need to really spotlight their business so that they can build, grow, and profit. We have Simone Sauter. She is a PR specialist and publicity coach, best-selling author, and a, and a tech nerd. She helps coaches to get more clients being featured in the media so that they can rise above the noise online, become a go-to expert in their niche, skyrocket their income, and make a bigger impact. Simone has built her online coaching business in the, in the relationship niche, specializing in breakup coaching solely with PR and became Germany's number one breakup coach in less than two years. Her website organically reached more than 1 million people within two years, and she created an advertising value of more than 3 million euros. Simone has been featured in Cosmopolitan, InStyle, Closer, and many other amazing media outlets she has been on several podcasts radio shows as well as on tv and we have her here today on the extraordinary being movement simone welcome to the show thank you so much for having me <laughs> you're welcome now i know people you know mess up in the media and they you know we see celebrities do things that they shouldn't be doing but then we get the pr specialists like yourself that come in and kind of clean things up a little bit is that how that works Depends on what they do, yeah. <laughs> Depends on what they do, I love it. <laughs> so, Simone, tell us a little bit more about yourself. How did you get into this? I mean, I definitely want to hear more about this breakup, you being a breakup coach too, but our real focus today is about, you know, public relations. So share us a little bit more about who you are and what makes you so unique. Well, I mean, to tell you the entire story, I have to actually go back to my breakup and divorce business. So I, sure. I make it really quick. So in 2012, my ex left me after a 10 years relationship, completely out of the blue, had a new partner within four weeks. She moved in with him. I was busy, you know, thinking about getting married, having kids and all these kind of things. Then I went to a, you know, through a really, really, really rough breakup for, for two years. And I basically went through hell. Um, but that was a, was a time when I, when I, you know, discovered myself and when I found my, you know, spiritual path. And after mm -hmm. these two years, I decided that I wanted to help other women to go through this much faster because I, you know, did a lot of things that were really wrong. And uh, so, yeah, then I decided to basically build this business. And uh, I was still an employee and w working as a PR manager for the world's biggest online dating website, which I will not mention. And, um, <laughs> myself six months time to really learn how to how to build an online business because I had a PR background I always like tech stuff but I you know didn't know how to build a website and uh, yeah and after six months I jumped and then um, I basically started my business doing what everything what every marketing guru told me right write a blog do a podcast mm -hmm. uh, do social media do this do that and I did that and I didn't even thinking about doing PR, even though it was my background, right? So, but um, it became very exhausting uh, because, you know, if you run a business and you do all the things and then you also try to do ads and you waste a lot of money there, you burn a lot mm -hmm. of money there because you can't make them work. So at a certain point, I was so frustrated that I said, okay, I, I'm just going to do this differently. I just, you know, bet everything on, on PR. Um, I'm going all in there. 
and that's what I did. So, um, and basically because it was my background, I, I knew what I have to do. I did a lot of mistakes, which I probably will talk about later. Um, but yeah, basically within 18 months, I have, you know, been featured everywhere. I got a, a book deal with a huge German publishing house, created an advertising value of 3 million euro and all these things that you also said in the intro. Yeah. And um, what happened is that, um, so I started my business in 2014 and, and now it's 2021. <laughs> so yeah, there are, um, yeah, well, I mean, six, six, seven years that I met a lot of entrepreneurs who had really great gifts, especially coaches, right? Great gifts. And um, they didn't really know and they don't know how to get themselves out there, right? So, mm -hmm. and they always ask me like, how did you do this? I want to learn this as well. So I thought like, okay, well, probably I, you know, should make a business out of that. And then I started this as a side business besides my um, divorce and breakup coaching business. And um, yeah, I took off pretty quick. And then I stopped doing my coaching in the, in the breakup um, coaching niche. And I just sell my products there. And now I, I completely focus on my PR business. So, mm -hmm. and that's, that, that's how I got in, into that. And I do this because I, I love to help people grow and to become visible mm -hmm. and to create this ripple effect. Because if I help them to reach their ideal client, um, yeah, we create this ripple effect and we can make the world a little bit better. So mm -hmm. that's my goal. That's why I do it. Point is, is like at the end, you said you're making the world better by getting people what they want. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you have, if you're a, if you're a health coach or a, I don't know, money mindset coach, a sex coach, relationship coach, whatever, and you reach more people and you help the, those people, you improve the lives of that, of those, of your clients, basically, mm -hmm. um, we make the world a better place. Right. And it's my job to help my clients to get them out there in a big way. And media can do that. And, and that's what I teach them. You mentioned about about finding your ideal client. How do you find your ideal client for your clients? Because they they probably are just so focused and maybe they don't see all these other possibilities or maybe they just want to do everything. And then maybe you're getting them focused on this one little specific topic that or niche that will help them grow their business. So how do you come up with that? Yeah, first of all, we need to think about what is their goal, right? So what do they want to achieve? But then uh, when it comes to finding their ideal client, it really comes down to um, doing research and finding the right media out there. What I see um, that hap what happens a lot is that entrepreneurs, they pitch media outlets and they probably also get featured, which is great, but then they don't get clients from there. And why? Because they pitch the wrong media outlets, right? So if you're, I don't know, a spiritual coach and you want to be featured in Forbes, that is great, but that's not really your, your main target audience, right? So um, yeah, that's, that's what mm -hmm. I teach. Like, how can you find those media outlets that are really the best ones for you so that you also can pre-qualify your audience because this is what it's all about, right? Mm. Yeah, can you talk, t please explain a bit. How do you pre-qualify your audience? Well, I mean, if, if you find the right media outlet, let's say you're a spiritual coach, um, then for example, um, we have the Happiness Magazine, right? In Europe, which is a huge spiritual mm -hmm. magazine and people who read this magazine, they are naturally interested in spirituality. So if you get featured in Forbes, you probably also come across people who are interested in spirituality, looking for a spiritual coach or, you know, a healer or um, however you want to call it. But the chances are not as not as high. So mm -hmm. what I always recommend is look for the right media outlets for your market, for your niche, and then pitch those and, and go from there. Because you, you, you also think at the end of the simple. day. You think that would be simple, but I, from, what, from what you're telling me, a lot of people do not understand this. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Like a lot of the thing is with media, everybody loves media. Everybody wants mm -hmm. to get featured in the media and everybody wants the big names. Right. <laughs> and it's great if you're in Business Insider and Forbes and Inc and all those huge magazines. Um, that's definitely great for your for your image, for your reputation. But if you really want to use PR um, to get clients and to or to grow your email list or whatever your goal is, then you really need to be, this is the very first step. You need to be very clear and very precise in your research and, and pitch really the, the right media outlets. 
Mm-hmm. No, that's great. So after we narrow down our niche and who our target audience is, where do you take the person then from that process? Well, let's say you um, you found the media outlet, the one that you want to pitch. Now, what you're going to do is, first of all, you consume the media outlet. Another mistake many people don't do. So you really want to know what are the topics that they cover. Do they have mm. special topics? Do they have um, you know, anything you can refer to in your pitch? And then you want to find this one journalist, this one reporter, who is responsible for your t- uh, for your topic. Mm. So what we don't do is we do not send it an editorial office ad, and we also don't send a press release. So mm. not sending a press release, that's why may, most people are like, why would I not send a press release? I'm doing PR, right? So I have a corporate background. I worked for uh, many international companies, and I... I um, I have sent a lot of press releases and they work really well because they were already household names. Now, and then I mentioned in the beginning that I did mis- like did made mistakes as well in the beginning of my coaching business, which was sending press releases because I was used to it. And I was like, you know, they work well for all these big companies. Why wouldn't they work for me? Mm-hmm. So I, you know, built my email list with like, I think 250 journalists uh, who are all interested in relationships and I send a press release and another one and a third one and no one came back to me which mm. was like okay why why does this not happen um and then I figured okay um let's let's go backwards and and I really went to the media outlet picked the right journalist and I send an individual email an individual pitch right so I what you do is you find this person and then you pitch yourself by you know building rapport with the journalist showing him or her that this is not a mass email that is really that you're really someone who has read what they have written or watched or listened or whatever um and you know you need to find a way to relate to them and then pitch them and then introduce yourself really with your elevator pitch put your website your phone number that you know how they can reach you do not send any attachments also big mistake many people make keep it really short and that's it basically no i absolutely love that so what i'm hearing is find make your list of the specific journalists for each of those publications or those outlets and then customize an email to them acknowledging that you you're familiar with their work and that you know show that you know this is not some generic email going out that you really want to engage with them get to know them better so then you can share what you sh- what you have to offer to see if it's a good fit for that publication or that media outlet uh, so you can get yourself featured and build that relationship with that person as well. I mean, yeah. I, that's, I absolutely love it because I know I've sent out press releases or emails out to that, you know, editor at, you know, blah, blah, blah.com. And you never hear anything back or they just send you back a generic email. Hey, we get a hundred submissions a day. You know, if we see it, we'll see it, we'll get back to you. So yeah. that there is absolutely fantastic to know. Cause I know probably after the show, I'm going to start putting that list together. That's for sure. So that we can get ourselves out there more uh, about our movement and what we're doing and our coaching. So that's great. So once you, you know, make that pitch and they connect with you, what, how, what happens from that point? Once I connect with you. So there was a step before that. So let's oh, say okay. you send this email and you don't hear back. That happens very often because a journalist naturally gets up between 150 and 300 emails per day and they, they can't respond to everybody. Gotcha. So let's say you sent the email, you didn't hear back, you follow up, right? I always say, like, be decent, be kind, because a lot of people are angry when they don't hear back. Mm-hmm. And then, I don't know, they, yeah, they judge the journalist or whatever because they don't understand how a journalist mm-hmm. works. They... The journalist is under um, immense time pressure all the time. So um, often they have to come up with up to 10 stories per day. So, and that is just really, you know, a lot. If you have ever written a blog post, produced a podcast, mm. you know, you know how, my, how many, how much it work, how much time it takes to yes. even come up with 10 ideas and then also produce that. So uh, they just don't have the time. And um, if they don't come back to you again after the first follow up, then you can follow up a second time if you are convinced that this is a really great story for this particular person. Otherwise, let it go, pitch another story another time, 
then it's it just didn't happen for that time right mm. so but then um if they come back to you if they say yes that's you know we're interested or i'm interested then there are two things that can happen so uh, because that you can pitch yourself as as two things so first as a contributor that means that you write uh, an article for another website and you deliver the content or you can pitch yourself as an expert and what happens then is that the journalist most of the time they will call you they will have an interview and they will you know write or you know create craft a story around what you told them and then they will quote you mention your name and also you know if you know how to do it mention your business this is not something mm -hmm. i can promise but this is what happens a lot of times so. i see I, I love the process because you, you made it sound like, yeah, it, it is simple, but it is it is not easy, right? It is easy to mess up really like a little mistake and then everything's just off. Uh, uh, so yeah. it sounds like so much of it has to be tailored. Your message, what you're saying, the, the, the words you're using. Now, now, so now if like I know what I'm presenting myself, but now I, I created that relationship, right? With this entity, with this journalist, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, how does that how does that look going on from there do they do they tend to just kind of like all right i got my interview i got my content i'm good i don't hear from you again because i know they're busy so do you continue the relationship on there do you do you want to be shown again um what are the factors there what is a relationship do you want to continue a relationship yes absolutely this is this is what you, what your goal should be because public relations is about building relationships right so once you got your foot in the door and you got featured once then the journalist knows you and then you can establish yourself as a reliable source right so you you can just pitch stories over and over and over again and then also a, a great thing to do is um, to uh, news check or piggyback it's called. So that means that you look, that you watch the news, you see what's going on, and then you think of an angle or twist that you can, you know, tell a story and relate to what's going on um, in the world and then reach out to that person again. So once you have been featured once, um, chances are very high that you will get featured a second time because they already know you. And what also happens is when you get featured, chances that other journalists reach out to you are, pro, are pretty high as well, depending on the topic, because they monitor each other's work. I can't tell you how, my, how many times a journalist reached out to me and said, hey, I've read your interview in that magazine, and that would be an interesting story for my audience as well. Would you be willing to give me an interview as well? Mm. So that's basically how it works. So once really, once you have the foot in the door and you have contact with the journalist, pitch them over and over again, even, even if they don't answer you, right? So as I said, they have to cover up to 10 topics a day. And then imagine you walk in there with, you know, a silver plate saying, okay, this is the story angle. This is the content. And this is me, you know, me already. And, you know, I'm really good at what I do. I'm reliable, meaning also you're on time. You thank the journalist for the interview. You share what he or she wrote, and all these kind of things, right? You know, really building a relationship with someone. Mm. From what I'm hearing, it sounds like what you're doing is you're building the the bringing more personal side on the relationship because of the whole thing about PR. Uh, because people tend to always try and get something instead of building something. So you're building a relationship with the the journalist. And whether or not they might need it at that particular time, as long as you have that relationship and you're continuously feeding them, eventually they're going to go ahead and saying, yes, it's the perfect time. I really need somebody on this particular topic. Yeah. And if you establish a relationship and establish yourself as a reliable source, they can also, it's also possible that they reach out to you and they, you know, say, hey, Simone, um, we're talking about um, people who go through a divorce around Christmas. Can you say something around that? Right. I had people reaching out to me on that topic. I didn't even pitch it. And then I was like, yeah, sure. And then I got on the phone and, you know, have an interview and I get featured again without me doing anything. So, um, so I, I just, I distinguish in proactive um, PR and reactive PR. So proactive is really when you, when you reach out, but the more proactive you do, the more reactive will we come, will come into your door. Mm. So, so this is, this is basically how a lot of these, um, you know, experts become on like Fox News, on BBC, whatnot, and you just kind of see them repeating. It's not necessarily because they're the best; it's because they have a good relationship with that elite or whatever they're yeah, whatever exactly. they're in. Because they, because they know and they learn how yeah. to build this relationship. 
I see. Okay. See, that, see I'm sorry. That gives me a, a huge perspective shift of how news media works. Because I assume that you know journalists would just go out there themselves <laughs> and, and go looking it for themselves. But now what you've explained to me, it's like, oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's not how it works at all. Wow. Th no, because you've really changed my perspective on how the media works. Now I realize that the media is really reacting to what people want to see versus yeah. what yeah that's they're just they're just saying what people want to see there's nothing to do with oh god that's incredible thank you yeah but, you know and also um if, if, like journalists are always looking for experts right and so i have so many journalists in my network um because i also study journalism and pr so and and i did i went the pr route but i have a lot of people obviously who went the journalist route and i also used to work as a journalist and um, so what they do is they make a Facebook post or LinkedIn post, say like, Hey, I'm writing, uh, I'm, I'm creating a content around this and that topic. Does anybody know anybody who, right? And then family, friends, and that's, you know, that's the first step because they desperately need someone. And if you then come around the corner and say like, Hey, I am a, I, I'm, you know, sticking to the example. I am a divorce expert. I'm a breakup expert. And I can share with you all the statistics, all my knowledge, all my experience. And then you also. Um, connected to a story. That's what we haven't talked about yet. Mm, basically, mm, ask, yeah. What should I actually pitch to a journalist? <laughs> mm -hmm. How do I convince so, a journalist that I'm the Ramstein expert? And they, if they want to talk <laughs> about anything, okay, they need to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, can was that a question? Uh, no, but I, I, it was it was an example. Like, how do I how do I convince? Um, uh, like, like, so, cause what you're saying is that this is a person who's just starting out as a journalist, right? And, and you come along. No, with not, not necessarily. Yeah. Oh, not necessarily. okay. Also, My that's, apologies. that's not, not a journalist who's starting out. That's, a, that's how a journalist starts out their research. Right? Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm sorry. Apologies. I didn't, I misunderstood you. Cont please. So, there are two <laughs> things. So sometimes a journalist already has a topic that they want to cover and that they need to cover because the, the chief editor said, okay, this is what we are going to write about, or this is what's going on in the world. And we, uh, uh, we will cover it now find people who are experts. And then there's the other side of you coming in and pitching yourself and suggesting a story angle, uh, uh, you know, and then the story, you need to find a story angle that actually matches their audience, matches their content, matches their media outlet. And that's, you know, that's how it works. So there are two ways. Sorry, I wasn't clear about that. No, no, thank you. No, no, that, that's exactly what we need. And, and uh, on this show, we're really big about that. We like people knowing that, hey, I misunderstood you. And thank you for explaining that to me because, oh, my God, like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Simone. Like, you're, you're, you're blowing my mind away because in my mind, I always thought, like, the media was just pushing the agenda all the time, 100% of the time. But now I'm realizing it's, it's not 100%. It, it's, it's, it's really a, it's a complicated system. It is. If it was so easy, then I, w I wouldn't have a job, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Oh, my God. Yeah, so so what's the next step? How, how do we go from, you know, we pitched them, they want they want us on. Where do we do go? Where do we go from here now? Like, how, how, what's the next thing that we need to create or help them with their process so that we can continue on getting this publicity for ourselves? Well, that depends. You know, that's something you always need to ask the journalist. So right. if you get on a, if you get, if you, if you get, uh, if you're a featured expert and you give an interview, it's pretty simple. You get on the phone and then afterwards uh, you send them uh, a photo of yourself or you probably also have a, a website with a PR and media section where the journalist can download everything, which is what I always recommend. Um, and then you, um, you ask them if they can send you the piece to proofread it. Most of them will do it or to authorize it, I think is the English word. And um, if you are a contributor, it's a little bit more complex because there are guidelines and every media outlet has their own guidelines. So read them carefully and really, you know, work with them, right? So, um, and also see what other um, guest posts have that have been on the, on the page before. Um, and what, what tone of voice do they have? How many words do they have? And all these kind of things, you know, but there are guidelines and then, you know, just follow the guidelines. Be on time, you know, if there is a deadline, really um, journalists really get in big trouble if they if they can't, um, um, how, how do you say that, hit the guideline, that reach the guideline, you know, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Uh, the agenda? Um, is it the agenda you're talking about? Like the main point of what they're trying to push through, like the theme? No, I, I didn't mean my guideline. Deadline, sorry. Deadline. Yeah, really time-wise, sorry. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. So the deadline. Um, so, um, yeah, because they really get, get into and get into a lot of trouble as some, something needs to be published, even if it's mm -hmm. online um, and you don't deliver. So uh, <laughs> if you do this once, they will never work with you again because wow. you're not reliable. Wow. Now, I know you mentioned a media kit. How important is that? And also what should be included in that? Um, so what I always recommend is on your website, uh, first of all, have a great about me page because that's what the journalist and everybody else checks out the first time, especially when you're a coach. Okay. So uh, make sure you have this in place and it's a great one. And then um, on your website, also a media and PR page. So what I have is um, topics I talk about, um, there are images of me, there is my bio, and there is where I have been featured before so that the journalist also can see that I am a pro or that I have been featured before, right? And that I don't do this for the first time. And also, if you put pictures there, put the, the source there, right, who has the copyright so that they can, that they, that they don't have to send you an email asking for that. So yeah. you always have to think, how can I make the life of the journalist as easy as possible? That is basically um, your job. And if you make this, if you make their life really simple, really easy, and they know, okay, if I if I contact Simone, I get an answer under 24 hours, mm -hmm. and she will get on the phone with me the next day. She will deliver everything that I need. There is mm -hmm. no stress, no, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, then they will come back because mm -hmm. they know, okay, I need this content now, and then it's just, yeah. okay, I will call her, and that's it. It's, that's okay. a really big problem, right? So, so that's also what people, what a lot of people do wrong. So, um, when a journalist approaches them, that they don't answer for three days, big, big mm. mistake. Oof. If you, see, if you see an email coming in from a journalist, answer, drop everything and answer if you want to get featured. Sure, sure. Should should I, when building my media kit and putting it on my website, should I make it like like a PDF file that they can just print, download, print? So they have all my content or no? Um, well, you can, if you want to, I don't have it on my website. So, I mean, I'm on my PR and media page, there is everything that, that you need from the bio to the picture and everything. If mm -hmm. you want to, you can also put a PDF there to download, but they most of the time don't need it because they really want to download the image and, uh, you know, copy paste your, your, um, your bio or find the most important things around uh, in your bio and just use it. Okay. And when, and when writing your bio, is there any particular way it should be structured or particular things I should definitely be adding into that to get more attention to myself? Yeah. I mean, you need to build credibility, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and you need to really um, show that, that you're an expert in, in what you do. So when you introduced me, you said my name, you said mm -hmm. my title, uh, you said what I help people with, and then you uh, said what my own achievements were. Right. Yes. So with my with my breakup and divorce um, bio, it was the same thing. My name, my title. What do I help people? Why do I do this? What's my story behind that? Right. So that people can relate and then people can see. Okay, she knows what she's talking about. So this is always the thing that you that you should keep in mind. Name, title. What do you do? Whom do you help? And what is what is your background? What is your credibility around this topic? Okay. And then you guide clients through that process, helping them create a clearer story, working through the type of copywriting that they need to do so they can get more attention. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, my clients, they, um, I work with them on a six month, uh, six months basis. Mm -hmm. And we start out with mindset. So, okay. I mean, we all know that mindset is a big thing in business in general, but if you get, if you pitch the media, there is, um, you know, a lot of um, mindset blocks around that because you suddenly get yourself out there. Many people will see you, thousands, sometimes even millions of people. And then we really start with a with the basics, right? The, your business foundation. Who is your ideal client? Um, what are their fears and desires? So all the all the details that we need to really be able to find the right media outlet and the right journalist. And then we we talk about what's your story? What's your business story? How do you craft a story angle? Um, how do you build your media list? How do you find the contact details? Um, how do you um, make a great uh, media interview, right? So once mm -hmm. you get interviewed, what, what should you do? What should you not do? Also how to write a, uh, an outstanding guest post, right? So 
uh, you can pitch yourself as a as a contributor but if you're not a writer if you don't know like how to write in a in a way that's interesting and appealing then you know it's difficult so yeah and and obviously the last step in the entire process uh, what also a lot of people forget is is the to leverage the media coverage right so i teach them how they can really make um i always say clients cash and reputation you know um how they how they can get this from from their media coverage um because a lot of people have media coverage and then they post it once on social media and that's it and there are so so many more ways that you what, that you can do to actually leverage it and to really you know use it to get more clients and to build your reputation and to to maximize um, the coverage in general so that that's the last step in the process well, that's, that's fantastic. You sure offer a lot there because I know a lot of people, you know, struggle with understanding media and marketing, even writing, especially even to pitch the right article. I know, you know, we've tested things out before with our, uh, with what we're doing and, you know, we've struggled here and there with it, but being able to talk to you today to learn more about this is absolutely amazing. So we want to, you know, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, one thing that I, I, I've been sitting here thinking about especially in your bio, how did you get, how did you build your business organically to get that many people to recognize you and recognize your website? Because, you know, I'm always seeing other coaches out there pitching other coaches, you know, how to build their business organically. <clears throat> and I don't think they have the skill set that you have to what you've done. And, you know, I would love to hear a little bit more about that. So, um, so my main strategy always was PR, right? And yeah. I also got myself in SEO really big time. So, oh, okay. um, so I, I uh, also wrote a blog. I still write a blog. My website still has uh, around 80,000 monthly readers um, at that time. Wow. Um, and what I did is I thought about a topic that I can write. Then I, I did the keyword research and then I crafted the post around that keyword, right? So it takes you around 15 minutes more, but you produce the content anyway. Sure. But so that is one thing. But then the other thing, the biggest piece is my PR, right? So especially my online PR, because, um, you know, if you get featured in a huge media outlet and they give you a do follow link on your website, that's really a lot of, that's a lot of SEO juice for your website, right? So it will, you know, show Google, wow, this is an interesting website mm -hmm. and um, you rank higher probably and your, your website becomes more important. Um, and that, that's basically it, right? And if you, if, you, if you have an interview in InStyle, for example, InStyle has, I have to look it up, I think 15 million readers in Germany and the, the content remains there. So I gave an interview about um, why self-love is so important to, to you know, overcome heartache and finding a new partner. And, you know, people search for finding a new partner and they will end up in this, uh, in my interview because InStyle is a huge website and they rank on page one in Google, especially for these topics because it's relationship. And then they will find me and click their sale through to my website, right? And then they will sign up for my email list and that's how they get into my funnel. And that's, you know, how I, you know, nurture them first of all, and then I sell them my products. That's great. Now, do you teach the SEO part in, in your program as well? Exactly. Yeah, that's um, that's because I know this is so effective. And that's also why a lot of people, uh, because a lot of people are scared. They hear yeah. SEO, search engine optimization. And obviously, you, you can make it as complex as you want to, right? But I really teach them how to write um, a, blog, a blog post for Google, uh, what to do, what not to do, and then use uh, a plugin and fill in all the details and just check how, how well they did. And I teach them how to do keyword research, obviously, because this is what a lot of people struggle with. And, and that's it, because they, they produce content anyways. And even if they don't blog on a regular basis, um, the content that they produce, and you should if you have a website, um, then, um, you know, it, it will stay there and you should optimize it anyways. Okay. I love, no, I love this. So for us to be more aggressive in what we're doing, I mean, we're, we're getting amazing people like you on our podcast show. We're getting more attention that way, but we really should be focusing on ourselves, putting together that list of journalists and then 
putting together our media kit and really reaching out to them and how our what we're doing is relating to topics of today. That is, is one way to do. So okay. basically, there are three things that you can pitch to a journalist. Okay. So the first thing is a story. So a story is um, emotional or it, it evokes emotions. It's relatable. It's timely. It's memorable. So and um, they work particularly well if you make yourself vulnerable. So mm -hmm. I shared with journalists that my ex left me after a 10 years relationship and he had a new partner within four weeks. So I demystified all these shame and pain mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. um, unworthiness um, or feeling of unworthiness. And that's how like a lot of my clients connected with me. And it's not surprising or it wasn't surprised that all my clients have been left by their partner, like 95%. And most of them also had a new partner then, right? Um, or they were, they were done for someone else, basically, yeah. this is how I would say. Um, and, you know, they came to me because they, they knew that I will not judge them and that I feel how they feel, right? I, I can, you know, relate to them. And um, so, yeah, that's the first thing. So that's a story, for example, you know, and I mean, there are a lot of stories, uh, personal stories, business stories. There are a lot of things that you can share with a journalist that are interesting. The second thing is your expertise, right? So a lot of people, a lot of journalists um, look for experts. That's what I said already. So they, they really want to pick your brain and, you know, that you share what you know, share information with them. And um, that's another way how to get featured. That's also a great way how to be how to be a contributor. Um, and then the third thing that works really well is um, sharing something contradictive, uh, something <laughs> really having a strong opinion. So what I pitched a lot is why everybody should suffer from heartache at least once in their lifetime. Mm. So you read this and then you're like, what? Like, why? Who, who would want to suffer from heartache and why would this be a good thing? Yeah. And I'm convinced about that this is a good thing, right? So you also have to have this opinion. Don't don't come up with something contradictive and you're actually convinced of it. So, but that's what I really think, right? If you suffer from heartache, it really um, it really uh, helps you to find yourself, to find you know, to to find your values. And okay, we, we don't talk about talk about heartache anyway. So that's what I pitched. Um, or then also. Um, if you send press releases, your PR really sucks. So there's also some, what? Like PR, because everybody <laughs> thinks PR is about press releases, right? And it's not. Of course, as I said, if you work in a, in a huge company, um, in your household name already, they work because, you know, they see the name and they think, oh, you know, let's see what they have to, to tell. Um, and yeah, it doesn't work for a, for a coach. So yeah, basically that's it. Story expertise and a strong opinion. That's something that you can pitch. No, I, I absolutely love that. What what else is in the process? Are we missing anything that we haven't asked you that that we should be asking you? No, we have to. So the first step is create your media list and find the journalist who covers the topic. The okay. second thing is find your story angle, which is story expertise um, or a strong opinion. The third one is your bulletproof pitch, right? So you pitch to journalists. The Fourth thing is um, your performance, right? So um, that's either the, the, get, the, the guest post as a contributor or the media interview. And the fifth step is the promotion, right? So the, the really to leverage the media coverage. That's the entire process. No, I absolutely love this because I think this is a lot more effective than spending hours, you know, trying to create organic material on Facebook and on social media, where this is a lot more, you get a lot more visibility, you're getting a lot more coverage, you're re reaching a wider audience, and you're establishing yourself more as an expert being interviewed or being a contributor to these media outlets than just, you know, writing a blog and then just put, pacing, putting it on Facebook or something exactly. of that nature, or just reaching out to people through Messenger, where this is, you know, this is solid, this is concrete, this is really building up your credibility and who you are as a thought leader and your authority in what you're doing because there exactly. is a lot of noise out there there are a lot of coaches out there there are a lot of people in the real estate industry in the mortgage industry and for you to really stand out this is what you truly need yeah yeah well i mean what you do is you leverage the reach impact and reputation of someone else for your own business yes. right and you you build the credibility you become the authority and you also build trust and trust 
is so crucial for every mm -hmm. entrepreneur, but especially as a coach, because yes. you, as a coach, you are the product. And there was a recent, um, a recent survey from Edelman, like a really huge PR um, uh, agency. Um, and they said that 81% of the people need to trust a brand mm -hmm. before they buy. So now this is trust a brand that generally, right? Now, yeah. if, you, if you think of coaches, that percentage is much higher because as I said, you are the product, right? Or as an entrepreneur, right? Or consultant, whatever you are, whoever you are. So um, trust is really, is really big. And so many people would say, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I can also do ads, but advertising doesn't build trust. It's actually yeah. the opposite. So there is another study from Nielsen, I think, um, that advertising, they lost a lot of credit, a lot of um, trust over the past years, just because of, I mean, think about Facebook, how many ads are we going to be bombarded with, right? And all yes. these, I mean, my timeline obviously is full of coaches, you know, because that's <laughs> what I look at. And so yeah. but I see all these people and everybody promises you the same thing, right? I give you more money, I give you more clients, I give you more this, mm -hmm. I give you more this. And yes, that is, you know, I can say this as well for me. But if I say this as an, in an ad, that's what I say about myself. And I can't say anything about myself because I'm the greatest, you know, I'm the most amazing <laughs> coach out there, right? So, but if someone else says that, someone like a media outlet, that's mm -hmm. a third party endorsement that people yes. often underestimate and they shouldn't because, you know, if you get featured, I don't know, in style or cosmopolitan as the breakup uh, coach, then I obviously need to know my uh, stuff, right? And, of another word so um yeah that's that's basically uh how it is yeah it kind of sounds like the chicken and the egg where you have to have some credibility within like your content so you have a blog you have youtube videos you have a podcast you have maybe a book you have all these different things in line because if you just go ahead and just go and try and be the expert you know, there's no, there's nothing backing to be the expert because then as a journalist, the journalist will go ahead and probably do the research and saying, look at all this stuff that this person provides. Maybe they might go to read a blog. Maybe they might read that book. Maybe they might look at the videos, whatever, or listen to the podcast. They'll see that stuff. And then it might resonate with them a little bit more emotional. So when they do have that interview, they're saying, Hey, I liked it when you said this, this, and that, and then if you can elaborate it more on it within the articles that, that the writing and then now you have you're now more of an expert so it kind of feels like the foundation should be still doing what everybody else should be doing but now adding another layer of it where it's being targeted am i correct yes and no so <laughs> um so the what you need to have in place is a website and um, content. If you don't have time to publish content on a regular basis, I always advise to have six to eight pieces of content on your website with really your, your core topics, like with your expertise, where you really showcase who you are and what you what you do, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's it, that you don't need more to pitch a journalist. And that's also what people learn with me. So if you don't have content yet, that's not a problem because you learn this with me, but this is the foundation. And then you can reach out to a journalist. What a lot of people think is I need to be the expert to become, to get featured in the media, which is not true because you become the expert by being featured in the media. So mm -hmm. you don't have to have a book. You don't have to have a huge social media following. And no, also not if you want to get featured in Forbes and all these huge magazines, you know, you have, what you have to have in place is an amazing story. That's it. Um, an amazing story. And you need to find the right person talking to. And then, um, the spiral goes actually the other way around because then once you get featured and let's say you want to publish a book, then either you, you are as lucky as I was, you know, um, that, uh, that publishing house approaches you and offers you a book deal like what happened with me. Or um, if that doesn't happen, which doesn't have to, um, then you pitch the publisher or the publishing house. And when you can say, I have been featured there and there and there and there, it's much easier for them to give you a book contract uh, or give you a book deal because you are somebody already, right? So it all it all starts, and, and obviously I'm biased, but it all starts with with media coverage, right? So if you really have this this third party endorsement, this credibility, then it's so much easier for you also to get speaking gigs. I mean, look at all the TEDx speakers. That no TEDx speaker hasn't been has not been featured anywhere. They all have been featured somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. because there are so many people out there who pitch um, or who want to be a, TED, a TEDx speaker. 
Um, so they, they can choose, right? And, and, and whom do they choose? The people who appear as the, the biggest expert, as the you know, most experienced person. And this just really is also, obviously you also need to know your stuff, but this is also your media coverage. Wow, this, thank this is, yeah, thank you. This, this has been an amazing show today. I mean, I, I, I'm actually going to be changing a lot of things that we've been doing because this really has opened my eyes to a new opportunity that I think will benefit us even more so than what our current strategy is. Because, awesome. you know, you know, we, we love bringing people on and we do a lot of interviews, but we haven't really got the opportunity for us to get interviewed on other outlets to show what we're doing, our movement, how we want to transform lives and how we bring in exceptional people like yourself to share your gifts and your talents with the world so they can be better informed for their own personal growth, both in life and business and make those achievements that they want to reach. And so thank you so much for showing up today. Your passion for what you do shines through um, immensely and it's been absolutely amazing. So we are very grateful for you to share your wisdom with us. Now, Simone, we are coming to the end of our show here. I would love to hear how people can get in touch with you, learn more about your programs and really, you know, capitalize on this opportunity with you to grow their business. Awesome. Yeah. So people can find me on my website, simonesauter.com. And um, you can, you know, learn more about me, obviously on my About Me page, but I also, there is also a uh, case study, which is called the 3 million euro case study, where I really outline how I got all my uh, media coverage and all these steps and everything. And um, yeah, basically, if you want, really want to connect with me, then uh, you will also find me on LinkedIn. This is my number one network. I'm also okay. on Facebook and Instagram and all these, you know, social networks, but I'm really, really present on LinkedIn. And that's, yeah, how you can connect with me. No, that's absolutely amazing. Do you, do you have anything else coming up? Any events? Um, yes, I'm actually um, in the middle of a launch at the moment. And um, yeah, so I'm opening the doors again for my publicity rockstar mastermind, as I call it, which is a six month mastermind. So if you're interested in that, you can also go to my website, schedule a call there, and then I will explain you all the details. Absolutely amazing. I know we could probably talk to you for hours on this because we didn't even get into a whole bunch of social media, but we, we want to definitely have you back on the show to share more of your knowledge. If you're up for it, I think you're definitely would be an asset to everybody out there and really to, you know, build upon what they currently have. So for anybody who is looking for more information, check out Simone. We're going to have information about her on our website at the extraordinary being movement.com. So you can reach out to her through us and we'll have a link on there to get reach back out to her. So there's no reason for you not to jump on this and learn more from her and really build your business. So before we end, I want to just get some quick final thoughts from Martinez. what do you think about today? Um, my mind is blown and I'm thinking more so of how we definitely, everybody definitely needs to, uh, to utilize uh, the skills and the knowledge uh, of, of Simone just because of where they want to go because it's like you're on a treadmill you know like you're that little uh, going nowhere and you and know how, and how fast you're spinning and thinking like all this work you're working harder and where are you going nowhere you're still just like quicksand whereas you need a, a subject matter expert to go ahead and propel yourself with that same amount and effort that you're putting into it's going to propel you forward no, I absolutely love it. Chris, what do you have? I, I just want to say, Simone, thank you so much for, you know, going through what you had to go through, all the all the grinding for you to learn everything you had to learn to get to this point. And thank you so much for, for you know, not only providing it as a course for people, but as well as, you know, providing us that information here in this call. Uh, thank you so much, because I feel like you just gave us like a hundred thousand dollar tip. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, so, thanks, thanks so much for having me. It was really a great conversation. And obviously, I'd love to come back. Perfect, perfect. So anybody out there, make sure that you connect with us at the extraordinarybeingmovement.com. Like us, share us, find us on all major social media outlets. And who knows, you might be seeing us in other large publications before you know it. So watch for us and make sure that you follow along, download our podcast, especially this one 
because I think there's tons of nuggets of wisdom and knowledge that you can take from here to really build your business and make it explode. We wish you the best and to your success. We'll talk to you soon. Bye now. Thank you.